Welcome to the Songwriter Connection Podcast, where we look at the craft of songwriting through the eyes of the songwriter. Each week, we make a connection with a music maker, listen to their songs, and hear their stories. From Nashville, Tennessee, here's your host, Dave Lenahan. Hey, welcome in to episode number 94 on the Songwriter Connection Podcast. And if you're listening on the day that this publishes, it's March the 15th. And you know what that means? In two days, it's St. Patrick's Day. And if you're thinking, Dave Lenahan, do you celebrate St. Patty's Day with a name like Lenahan? Come on! Are you kidding? <laughs> yes, it's big. Uh, I am Irish on my father's side. And some of my fondest memories of my grandmother uh, singing to us kids and tucking us in at night and calling me darling. <laughs> and she could talk with that Irish brogue when she wanted to. And I loved it. She loved those old Irish songs. And I miss her so much. And to this day, I swear, if she was here right now in this room and I put on uh, my, my player here, if I played Danny Boy, she'd be in a pool of tears. And I'd probably be there with her. <laughs> It was amazing. I miss her so much. Um, so yeah, yeah, we celebrate St. Patty's Day. And, um, you know, I, I mentioned before that I used to work at Ryman Auditorium. And it was one of the coolest jobs I ever had. It really was. I was a tour guide and I got to work in the record booth a little bit. And people would come in from all over the world. And they'd come in and they'd make records and, and I'd produce them for them. It was so much fun. But what really surprised me was, of all the countries that visited that visit Nashville, I'd have to say Ireland was, was like... We had. It seems like I was always bumping into people from Ireland, and I'd go out, oh, and I always make a big deal of it. I, I I'm Lenahan. I'm Irish, and uh, sometimes they were like, "He's crazy," <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes they'd stand and talk, you know. And I remember one guy go, hey, "Lenahan, that's a big name in politics in Ireland." There, our defense secretary was Lenahan. I'd say, "Well, how does he spell it?" He's L E N I H A N, and I guess his son was in politics there too. And I go, "Well, you know, my grandmother Lenahan always used to say." If it's spelled L-E-N-A-H-A-N, then somehow we were related. That just a few spelled it that way. Mm-hmm. So one day, this is this is pretty amazing to me. I still think about this. One day, I'm working in the booth, and these two lovely ladies come in. And when, when I'm always like, "You're from Ireland, hugs," you know. And these two lovely ladies come in, beautiful Irish accents. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Hey, I'm Irish. I'm Lenahan." And she, they look at each other. They're sisters, and they look at each other, and they go. That's our name, too. Wow. And I'm like, seriously? How do you spell it? And they go, L-E-N-A-H-A-N. And I'm like, family! You're family! <laughs> Hug, we took pictures. It was crazy. So, yes, we celebrate St. Patty's Day. You better believe it. And it's Friday. And um, everybody's got Irish roots on St. Patrick's Day. But today, our guest really is from Ireland. Welcome, Claire Cunningham. Hi, Claire. Well, hello, Dave. How are you? I Thank am, you for having me. I am doing so well. It is such a pleasure to have you on. <laughs> Just, you know, around uh, St. Patty's Day. I know. Uh, I, I want to tell you a, a few things about Claire. Her, she's got a list of accomplishments that are like four pages long. And I can't get into t- to all of them, but I will tell you this, that recently she won the 2022... Uh, Artist of the Year. Uh, uh, she, this is this is the Josie Awards, which is, and I tell folks, it's kind of the Oscars of independent music. <laughs> and when we're talking Artist of the Year. We're talking regardless of genre. They, this is everybody. They throw it all in together, and Claire was your winner. And this year they held the uh, the ceremony at uh, the Opry Grand Ole Opry um, uh, Opryland. At Opry, the, the, at the Opry, that's what I'm trying to say. It happened at the Opry House. And I know Claire was, was hoping that that night that she would get to step into that circle because that's been on her bucket list for yeah. a long time. It didn't happen, but it's okay, right? Yeah. Because this Saturday, <laughs> and we're so happy that you're here the week Mm-hmm. Uh, that you're going to make your Opry debut. You're going to step in that circle. Tell me how that's got to feel. A little surreal. Um, mm. And honestly, you know when you have a dream mm-hmm. sometimes and y- you just you can always envision something, but sometimes you just realize, like I had to come to the the term, like come, with, come to the terms with the fact that that was probably never going to happen because I'm not... A country singer per se mm-hmm. and um it was just so f- so far beyond expectations that like <laughs> it kind of <laughs> does feel a little surreal it really does and oh. I just have to say I'm so blessed and mm. you know um as somebody coming from a different country and getting to you know stand on a stage that has 
housed so many mm. of the greats before me and still does. It's just an honor to even be put into that kind of caliber, you know? I, so When I worked at Ryman, just walking across the stage at Ryman, I would get goosebumps. Right. So I can't imagine stepping in that circle, but I, yeah. you're a pro. You're going to, you'll be fine. Uh-oh. <laughs> you already know what you're going to sing? You know? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. do. I, I have one song and I will do it for you today as well. It's, Great. it's kind of what I call my baby. And to be honest, uh, at the time of recording us here now, I think it's just almost five years old. Uh, yeah. This song, yeah, the song. You've been here five years. Now. Yeah. Five years, yeah. In Nashville, I've been. It was the twenty first of May, mm. so in May it'll be five years. But I took a flight <laughs> to the US uh, on the eighth of February two thousand and eighteen, and so yeah, wow. it wasn't long after that I wrote that. The song I will do, and it's called Aaron and my Creek. It's it's, it's hard it, it's hard to imagine uh, that it's not quite been five years mm. because you're so entrenched in the community here in Nashville. Right? I yeah, I I feel like it's only been yesterday, but also I feel like I've been here twenty years. <laughs> you know, and it's just been a beautiful journey and continues to be because there's just such a pot of amazingness here amongst. The people, the musicians, the vibe, the business side. It's just mm. Nashville has a lot going for it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and especially again during those hard pandemic years, you know, it was one of the few places that yeah. continued to not thrive, but it didn't get shut down the way a lot of like we New found York a way to LA. make it work we did we did, we did. <laughs> we did. yes we did yes. well I want to play a song and, and talk a little bit about it because I'd like to get a song right away but I want to play yeah. a recorded version mm. uh, there mm. is a, a beautiful record that you released called Dear Ireland and yeah. um to me it and I, I and I bet you I have listened to it 10 times in the last two days <laughs> thank you um it's such a beautiful record and to me it's like a it's like a love letter back home isn't it that you know okay so you say that and I'm so happy because the night I actually wrote the actual song called Dear Ireland mm-hmm. it was like 4.44 a.m. Oh. and I I don't even believe I had gone to sleep I used to run on actual musician hours I don't anymore mm-hmm. and it just started coming to me the lyric the melody and so I, I wrote it down and I just kind of played around with it the next day I woke up and I always speak to my parents most days. Mm -hmm. And so my mother said, uh, any news? She always asks if there's any news. And I said, funny, I actually wrote a song last night um, called Dear Ireland. Uh, It's not finished. And she said, oh, that sounds like you're writing a love letter back home. did you? She said that. And that's the fifth verse. If you notice the lyric, it's like, and um, as I'm signing off, I sign off at love. So it's it's actually, I then looked at the whole song like a love letter. So you are right on the spot there. Well, I'm hoping (laughs) you play that. We're going to play Clovers. Yeah. Okay. And get the story behind it afterwards. Okay. This is our guest. Claire Cunningham, who is with us on Songwriter Connection today. I turn to him for mercy and put my pride away. I hope he is me calling, calling out his name, his name. For that I owe him everything, for that I owe my life. When clovers turn to life and the rivers run in red, I wash all doubts away to the light. 
that's your I breathe your light of forgiving grace in clover fears a glow your spirit grows in my body as I push my sins away to rest I open up my hollows and carry your crest when clovers turn to light and the river's running red I wash all that's away to the light I will be led for telling you, if that doesn't get you into the St. Patty's Day spirit, nothing will. I'm ready to break out the Jamesons right now. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. Oh, that's so This new album is mm. just beautiful. It's uh, Dear Ireland, and it's mm. out there streaming on all the platforms right now. Yeah, it sure is. Mm. It is. And, you know, I'm planning on uh, another Celtic record. Are you? Yeah. <clears throat> I've got enough tracks to get another one out there. And that's so, great. yeah. <laughs> now, people need to know, you've, you've written or co-written all the songs. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, 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 actually. Um, and, you know, funny um co-writing is obviously something you heavily do when you first especially first come yeah. international it's right? a natural thing yeah. it's a natural thing yeah. and um but that you know um i think it was funny because i moved here obviously nearly five years ago and mm. i was writing almost like every day Were you? yeah mm. but then i felt like i was getting burnt out and yeah. i was writing topics that didn't you know it does it right it, yeah. it can mm. you can overdo some things and uh, that was definitely happening to me i was walking into writing rooms just tired mm. and not coming up with any good ideas and mm. and i just felt like i was writing for the sake of writing and then the pandemic hit and that's mm. when the lord just took me away yeah. from it all and yep. just poured into me and did you wow did you come come down with COVID? did you have covid or oh i no? did a few did? times yeah mm. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah now i'm i you know i'm a i'm a very uh, health conscious and fitness yes, buff, are. right? So, uh, fitness model, right? Didn't it? Something about you in a magazine <laughs> oh, cover. Oh, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. quote unquote model. But <laughs> yeah. no, I just, I love, for me, my mental state is best when I've exerted all of my energy on a daily basis. And I feel the it's, same way. Yeah, yeah. right? Fitness it is. is it's, a it's, big it's, part. Yeah. 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 And I yeah. always tell people, like, there's no, you don't have to be going to the gym seven days a week. No. And, you know, but just move your body yeah. move what what you've been given and and it, it will serve you in the long term for me sharper mind yeah, yeah 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 and, and it does stress it, and, it does it's yeah. got a multitude of benefits to it you know sure so i love yeah. it <laughs> so that's important you work out every day every day Something, um huh? yeah but there is that whole thing where you gotta like obviously i'm 
you know um conscious of working certain muscle groups at a time because you can like trust me i've overdone it too when it comes to exercise to the point where uh, there's a thing called rab rabdosis and um, rabdosis or Hmm. rabdomite yeah there's an actual term for it but it's in short it's called rabdo and it's when your muscle starts breaking down oh um, to the point where it starts poisoning your blood and no it'll go into your blood. And so if your Ooh. urine starts showing that there's blood or there's a darker color and you're, you can die. Like oh. it's your kidneys failing you oh, basically. Man. And I've had that a couple of times. And, really? Oh yeah. And I've oh. had the doctors like, why don't you stop? And I'm like, you don't understand. And I they're like, stop. you can talk to somebody. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, 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 you don't understand. <laughs> this is how I don't talk to uh, somebody. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm quite the, yeah, I go on it. But now I've learned over the years that if I start feeling fatigued or the Lord will just have me, he'll literally, he'll be like, no, Mm. not today mm. and so uh it's amazing i just i've learned more and more to listen to That's the body great. but the moving body. every day i will always move yes yes yeah. yes yeah now you are from cullen which is a yeah. county county louth right yeah. am i saying that right yeah you are Ireland? you got it yeah yeah and i read that at age six you were picking up you were playing piano you were picking mm. up a piano you were playing <laughs> piano hey and that- <laughs> these muscles are for real <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, six-year-old. Uh, she was superwoman at six years old. She picked there up a piano. But within a few years, you were playing Mozart. I was. I was. That's incredible. That's uh, prodigy stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was tough, though. Like, sight reading wasn't something that came very natural to me. I was more, I, I loved Hear hearing. Play. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in order to do that, I went through all the grades, you know, mm-hmm. and you had a teacher. But because of my diligence and uh, that has served, like, you know, gone through my entire life. When I say I'm going to do something and I put my mind to it, I will do I it. I'm a that. doer, yeah. not a sayer, right? So what will I know of you? Yeah, I <laughs> really believe that. I yes. am very, very, like, I'll go on it. And yeah. so I was very studious, I guess, in my, uh, you know, practice. And I worked it. It yeah, was, worked yeah. But it was a lot of muscle memory. Now, mm-hmm. there's not a single bit of Mozart I could play now if I was to sit down, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I'm sure if I was to put the time in, yes, I could probably, you know. Having that ear is, is such a gift. I mean, mm. my brother was born with that. Wow. And, and he could hear it. In fact, I can remember the guitar teacher yelling at <laughs> you're not reading the music you're playing from what you hear you know mm. and that's the way he was and he wanted to learn you know to yeah. sight read like you right. said mm. um, but he had that he had that perfect pitch you could play a note you know, I never I, I've not met too many people you play a note and you tell that's yeah that's that's also incredible when uh, people uh, can how do you know that it's uh, yes, sure. wild, yeah. wild, so and you know it's it, like the whole it's thing. It, it is, it's yeah. a true gift. Uh-huh. Uh, but sight reading definitely wasn't didn't come easy. And then That's when singing as well, I had to. I remember when I went, I moved to England um, once. I had uh, done some um, music, like it was like a diploma in Dublin, mm-hmm. and I actually passed all the exams bar the sight reading one Mm. and literally that was the only thing that was going to stop me from getting into um vocal tech at the time it was called in the london college of music and i remember crying and i was they Uh made me fly back over to retake that test and i still failed but the teacher in the room thank god for him david combs i'll never forget him he he took me aside he said you you have flown all the way here today, all right? I can see your determination. And I, you didn't pass, mm. but I'm going to let you. I'm going to, I can see something in you that I know you're going to surpass all this. And I know you're wow. dedicated clearly if you're flying from Ireland to England just to take a test. Mm-hmm. And I owe him everything because... You know, three years later when I got my Bachelor of Arts, I actually, I think I ended up getting an A minus or a B in the sight singing. Wow. And I remember turning to him and I said, you believed in me. And and that could have been the only thing that stopped me from getting into that, which real looking back like that started all the like the people that I met, the the journey I went on from just that. Your you journey know, studying is you know. absolutely amazing. The things that you've done mm-hmm. um, in researching you, uh, I know that you, uh, 
So you have a degree in music, and, <laughs> yeah. and you started putting out um, YouTube videos of you playing acoustic guitar, which you picked yeah. up at age 16, you're self-taught? Yeah, self-taught. So any guitarist out there, I always tell them, like, you know, just kind of ignore what I play. <laughs> no, you do all right. You know, I mean, I just, I know the basics, and but I did. I took everything that I learned on piano, mm -hmm. and then I was able to just sit with the guitar and then just work it out that way. And so, and I remember one piece of advice, a cousin of mine, he's a professional musician, the only one in the family. And I remember him saying, it's going to be sore. Your fingers are going to bleed, yeah, uh, but just go through it. And I actually physically was literally pulling my fingers across the strings to make them bleed and to, to, quicken up, up the process yeah mm -hmm. so that and i didn't care how much pain it was i was going i was determined i need you to have so driven it's oh it's i and you know a lot of and you still like that today i you? am i'm extreme uh -huh. but th here's the thing and people always say how do you get this how do you do that i say i can't explain what's in earth in me mm. but all i do know is that wow. i i have that and as much as i'd love to you know, tell you what I do or um, share with you some things. Everyone has their own inner being that either has that or you don't. And yeah. I have. And so I get to use it to my best ability. But I never switch off. I legit, like, I'm That's just great. going all the time. I'll bet. I'll but, bet. I mean, well, Everybody says it's a 10-year town, and within mm. five years, you're playing the Grand Ole Opry. Well, that's another thing, and I'll, I'll be truly honest with you. I, I moved to town. I was told it's a 10-year town. Mm -hmm. It takes this All long All the stuff you did in the past, forget oh, about it. Like, and you were in a big yeah. rock band. We're going to talk about that later. Yeah. yeah. Okay, forget all that. It's a 10-year town. You're going to have yeah, to... Yeah. If I didn't have a 615 number, I wasn't going to be taken seriously. Oh. If I wasn't going to do country, I may as well forget it. Oh. Uh, it's a 10-year town. It takes this long to get a cut, and I was like, in the first year, I had major artists get a cut then Did 615 you really? yeah, yeah myself actually Rhonda so Rhonda Funk Rhonda Funk who you've sure had on. Um, it, yep yeah. very driven as oh, well yep like and we fun. talked we kind of had this same conversation she goes, people said it's a 10 year time and you can't do this and she goes but like I just did <laughs> Like people are always going to put their limitations yeah. on you. And yeah. I think there's there's a part yeah. of a part of the reason why Nashville runs like that is because one, people, if you're given ten years, you're gonna take ten years. Mm -hmm. You know? People always say, Oh, you see, the success happens after ten years. I'm like, Yeah, because you you laid your life out so that you'd get given that amount of time yeah. and because you believed that it took that long. The four minute mile was never broken That's right. until it was broken. That's right. And then and it was then, broken a lot. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think this whole, like, don't get me wrong. I think there's, you're not just going to come in and waltz off the street and then <laughs> suddenly boom. But I believe with hard work, determination, and just not listening to the masses yeah. that, mm -hmm. you know, because so, so when they were all telling me I needed to do this country and do that, and I was like, okay, well, you guys, that's perfect. <laughs> Good luck for that. <laughs> and I, uh, I still have my 508 number, so it hasn't... <laughs> destroyed me yet you know yeah. oh my yeah. god oh there's so much I want to talk to you about but I've got to hear another song <laughs> we, you've got your guitar and we're live around the dining room table which is every bit of part of this show mm -hmm. um, would you play us another one and then we'll talk some more I want to go absolutely uh, I want to talk about the rock band days uh, yeah and, yeah and, yeah and what brought you to America all coming up perfect yeah. well and I wasn't planning this one but you did say maybe do Dear Ireland I so, would yeah, love why not? I, I guess love with, the, with the timing of, yeah. of, of this coming out so awesome yeah here we go Dear Ireland Dear Ireland, if I could take you here with me, I'd wrap you up, I don't need much, but more than a memory. Dear Ireland, for wherever I may roam, there not be another place that I could call home. Dear Ireland, always remember me. Dear
dear Ireland Oh, your beauty touches all Then lay their feet on those green fields And hear your oceans call Dear Ireland Until we meet again someday Please call to me and let me know You're only a heartbeat away Dear Ireland, always remember me Dear Ireland, always remember Claire Cunningham, you need to know that it's one take, it's live. I don't edit. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, oh my God, don't make a That's mistake. That's incredible. <clears throat> the way you do that with your voice, I don't know how to... Ex- <laughs> I, 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 it's, it, it's beautiful. You think, I don't know, it's so funny because a lot yeah. of times when I was growing up, um, I remember having a one time I had a, a vocal coach, you know, I think mm. I was around 15 or 16 and mm-hmm. and at the time in school the, 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 they were all like, well, you need to get rid of that like, you know, the quiver type thing that you have going on and I was like, I don't think I can, I mm. think that's, that's not really, that's, that's just that comes out and they were like trying to like stop it. No, um, <laughs> no, no, don't stop that. <clears throat> no, stop. Don't I, I stop mean, no. I that's just, what yeah. makes you you. It's amazing. I mean, <laughs> Gotta take a little break but I want to okay. hear more about that song and Dear Ireland, Perfect. love letter to, to back home. So Yay. don't go away. You're listening to the Songwriter Connection, connecting with music makers and hearing their songs and stories. Now back to the show with your host, Dave Linehan. If you love the uh, Celtic sounds, in, in who doesn't where I'm seeing Patty Day, this is a, a record you've got to have. Uh, you can find it on all streaming platforms, Dear Ireland, and our guest is Claire Cunningham, who makes her debut on the Grand Old Opry this week. I'm so excited for you about that. You know, they say that you're going to sing with an Opry member. Yes, that's the plan as well. So Uh because a lot of uh, every show always has one of the members too, sometimes more (laughs) that perform on those particular nights, you know. So um, yeah. So do you you know who's? I don't. don't. Not yet. I did. Hey, listen. I put in a request for Garth Brooks, but you know (laughs) if he wants to. (laughs) Hey, speaking of Garth, you were in his movie, the the documentary, right? Yeah. So that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, So Garth, um, they put out. For those of you in America who wouldn't have seen it, and I don't think it was even available over here because of the channels and stuff, um, they did a whole documentary on on Garth. Um, Going home, or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah. he had uh, five sold out shows back home, and they were doing a little docu series on him, and it was including New Orleans, Nashville, and home. And so 
the guys luckily I had previously a couple of years back I played out at Johnny Cash's log cabin I've played there a few times there's been a few different yeah exactly nice Uh that's where actually um, Clovers was recorded not not in that studio but uh, in Drac the co-writer of that at a studio out there Mm -hmm. Drac Gibson right yeah 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 the man the man (laughs) <laughs> my papa bear I call him uh, but um, yeah I had been performing at the Johnny Cash uh, log cabin and um, one of the TV presenters was there mm-hmm. and uh, heard me play and we did a little uh, interview as well for a TV uh, thing back home nice. and then when they were doing the series for uh, Garth um, he actually contacted me and he said, listen, uh, Paul Quinn is his name. And they said they were going to be in Nashville from this date to this date. And I was like, oh, dang, I'm going to be in down in Key West for the Key West Songwriters Fest. That's a good one. Oh, so fun every yeah. year. It's amazing. But uh, I said, listen, this, I really want to do it. So, um, mm. like, I'll rearrange my plans that I go a day later. So we made it work. Wow. And I was just, yeah. But I didn't know it went out the night that it went out and I was on stage and all I could see was my picture on this TV screen and people saying the word hamster and I was like oh my god no because I called my first hamster Garth after Garth Brooks and it made the cut and (laughs) so I'm just getting an array of messages through and I was like oh gosh what is going on right now (laughs) cool I got this song called Squirrel Train it's been, squirrel train, I like that. It's been played around the world now, and, and now everybody's sending me squirrels, um, and I share everyone I get on my socials. Oh my um, gosh. It's a crazy song, but we, we're not talking about me, we're talking about no, you. But you know, it's, it's so intrigued. cool to talk to you. I gotta tell you, I met you probably when you first came to town. Mm. It was a global songwriter connection yeah. mixer. Oh my god, that and really was like yeah, when I first came like, to town. Oh man, and it, the, these mixers are incredible. Uh, we've had Shri uh, yeah. on the show, Shri yes. uh, Spoltori, who puts these on Global Songwriter Connection. Yeah. And I remember meeting you with, with my wife, and, and, and I. What struck me right away, of course, are the tattoos. They're beautiful. They're gorgeous, and you are beautiful. And um, and we approached you and, and introduced, and, and right away with that English or that Irish accent, I'm like, oh, you know, I can listen to her talk all night. And I've been following you ever since, but it, but I've never really had to this to sit down opportunity no, like we have now. And I really appreciate that because I've been fascinated by you since that day. You are so, so sweet. So thank you for for coming on the show. No, I appreciate any platform that I can just you know get to talk about this beautiful journey and Mm -hmm. and just connect with people because every opportunity is a is an opportunity to for a new set of years to hear and and Mm -hmm. and i do have a lot to say in in regards to wanting to like as much as i do my cultural stuff mental health awareness is so Mm -hmm. huge with me and Mm -hmm. and so i just i any platform I get a chance to just connect and or for people just to maybe dig a little because I'm going to be putting out it's I'm calling it a memoir I mm-hmm. don't know how it's going to position itself in in the terminology of that but um, I'd love to do a physical copy of a book but wow. I until I get a set of hands I, that's not going to happen so I'm, I'm mm. about to put, uh, get it proofread now and and, right. and get it up on my website just in time for people to really get to know <laughs> Now, you do a lot uh, regarding mental health. I do. And, I do. Uh, yeah. Talk a little bit about that and how you that know, became a passion. Yeah. Um, just being a child who, who went through a lot mm-hmm. um, personally, um, and I realized that the the way I was and, and the anger that I had and anxiety, chronic anxiety was something that mm. just was part of who I was and I just thought that was normal and Mm -hmm. it really I was 27 when more than a handful of people had said you know do you ever think of maybe you know getting some help and Mm -hmm. I was like help what are you all talking about you Mm -hmm. know I knew better you know and and culturally back home it's more of a it was a stigma, you know, and yeah. uh, talking about your feelings isn't something you do a yeah. whole lot of. And yeah. and I learned to conceal how I was. I was very good at putting on a front, you know, smile in front of the camera and tell people I'm great. But at home, I'm just dying inside. And and then so my health plummeted massively because of because of that. And so 
again blessings to the doctor i did go and see i was 27 i decided right let's go talk to a, you know somebody and see what the story is mm-hmm. and he said and i walked in and i said here's the the deal though right i don't mind going to see a therapist i don't want any pills i'm not mm-hmm. going down a medicated road that's Good for you. and thankfully because in in like in America, they're more inclined to want to just like yeah. throw a pill at Take whatever pill. problem You'll be it fine. is. Yeah, yeah. you mm-hmm. know. Whereas he said, "Well, you know what? No, you don't have to. Maybe go to the gym." And I was like, "The gym?" And now I was active, but I, I you know, I had fallen Perfect. off the wagon a bit. Uh-huh. And he said, "No, because you know, m- movement is is proven to help with you know anxiety and relieving stress and stuff like that." So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. coupled and combined with that, and because I. Um, ended up seeing a therapist from she happened to be from northern ireland so she Um, already understood the cultural side of things i was battling with which was half the battle to be honest if i'm being honest you know so she knew kind of like but in 10 weeks i promise you like she said if and not the gold star type thing but she said if if everyone came into my room Mm -hmm. and went out and did the work the way you've done it they'd be coming to me healed like not healed but I wouldn't be with them three and four years later and in 10 weeks I I was a brand new person man I was just like and my life overturned because that's when I got the phone call (laughs) <laughs> yeah, from Thunder we, I, was, I, I was hitting <laughs> toward that. So, mm. You were putting uh, v- videos on YouTube of just acoustic, and, yeah. and, and, and someone heard that amazing voice um, yeah. and contacted you. So, yeah, tell that story. It, that was wild. <clears throat> Again, uh, a whole, I'd say, divine intervention there because mm-hmm. YouTube wasn't all too commonplace at that time. Um, and I was in a band in the UK called Smoke and Aces. I put Smoke them together. Aces. Yeah. yeah okay. uh, rock and roll heavy, classic mm. 70s rock and roll oh, kind of thing. Love it. <laughs> That's it what I grew up so on. so fun. <laughs> we did a little glam here and there too. But yeah, we were the corporate band that you would hire if you wanted something a little different, right? And gotcha. so mm-hmm. we, uh, we were pretty uh, successful with that was my career. I built the band with my co-founder, Jamie Hiscox. And the two of us went out and we also had a duo and so we were doing weddings as the band and the duo uh, and working seven days a week some years we did 394 shows it was ridiculous Uh, there's 360 uh, right exactly so we were doing most weekends were doubles like yeah yeah wild and um i worked us to the bone i really did uh just because i just music is everything you know yeah um, but it was then we started getting requests for videos like, oh, do you have any? So like what you would call an EPK here, like an mm-hmm. electronic press kit. Right. I decided let's let's just sit down in the living room and just bang out some videos and put them online. So if anybody wants a video, then there's the videos are there. Cool. Little did I realize that one of those videos just not even went viral, but it was just a highway to hell i believe um by acdc just got picked up by the ears of of a girl in sweden Mm -hmm. um and there was a lot even to this day i think there's over like there's probably about a thousand five hundred comments on the thing because there's also a girl who does these covers but she's got a lot more <laughs> cleavage showing oh. <laughs> and, okay. and so people are like oh but the girl with the bo- oh it's just so no. silly it's <laughs> ridiculous so grab your popcorn but um mm. <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> but this this particular girl in sweden her name is philippa and she was requiring a singer for her then band and they're called Thunder Mother uh, and she needed somebody with a what she wanted to term it um, a whiskey voice a whiskey voice a whiskey voice uh-huh. so my whiskey voice got heard <laughs> on this <laughs> random video a month prior I'd only just posted the videos um, and she was determined she wanted to, to contact me and I got this random voicemail uh, one morning and she didn't leave a callback number so I didn't think anything more of it until the next day and she um, had also messaged me on Facebook but because at that time the request folder I didn't know it existed 
So mm-hmm. she uh, thankfully called me back the next day. I chatted with her. I kind of told her, look, I have a line up here in the UK. We're booked out two years in advance. People, you know, I've got corporate stuff, weddings. Like it was legit. That was, wow. that was my business. And two I said, yeah, yeah, literally two years. Two, some people wanted to do three. I Two was the maximum we would ever take in advance. Um, wow. So yeah, it was busy. And she told me all these dates and these festivals and then 15 minutes later she hits me with well have a think i'll give you the website um because we do have uh the we're opening up for motorhead uh, at metal town fest and i was like oh what were those dates again (laughs) like legit i'm sitting in my car coming out from the gym i'm i reached to my glove box and then i started taking down the dates oh my went home and went on the internet and uh saw that they were all female and Uh female band yeah this is that's kind of cool. Told the guys in the band, I said, so this kind of happened. Um, and it was, the thing was in three weeks. Mm. And I was just going through my therapy at the time. And um, oh man, I was just like, what am I going to do? And they were like, you can't turn down this kind of opportunity. I love that they said that. You know, they really yeah. did. Like they were That's all awesome. for it. And so I had some hard phone calls to make, like mm. some brides were crying down the phone, but I was like, explain. No. I said, listen, I'm not going to leave you as high and dry. Like obviously we'll, we'll get you, a, yeah. you know, a replacement or whatnot. But so that's kind of how that sparked it. Wow. They flew me out three and a half weeks later, a month later. And yeah, Ended up going on that stage, opening and up you know, the entire festival. It was and, and they were from Stockholm, right? And we've mm-hmm. talked about the Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, that's kind of the Nashville of Europe, isn't it? Right. It's just crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, so much great music. Out oh, there. ridiculous! Yeah. Well, Sweden just have like all the producers. Like you look, well, the yeah. biggest one in the world almost is like yeah. Max Martin, yeah. and yeah. Um, just they've got. They've got it in the water there. Yeah, like, they do. They they do. They do. But yeah. and and some people ask, I wonder why. And I I think their weather is just so bad in the winter and so dark that they're all just down there making music, music like yeah. in their studios and yeah, you know. Be. And 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 I kind think of the same with Muscle Shoals here. You've been to exactly. Muscle Shoals, right? Yeah, it's in the water. Oh, yeah. it's in the yeah. water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think when a place, and that's why I think Nashville thrives because when mm. you put a bunch of people who are in the same you know uh caliber and then and they want the same thing and there's a success that's just starting to bubble somewhere that's infectious Mm. so when people ask why a certain area right I, i i truly but then when when I look at Irish artists, there's a if you come from suppression or oppression, yeah. and there's there's just an unwavering truth and storytelling behind the culture that yeah. also bleeds through. I, I think, think right too. away like cranberries and oh, Dolores, come on, right? You know, yeah, the zombie song. Oh, yeah, I mean, a lot of angst in there. I know, yeah, so. I know, and there is, and there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, pain that comes from certain cultures, and like you mm. look at like Appalachian music, or, yeah, like there's just something so special that comes from certain areas in the world that I, you can't you can't get that unless so you've gone through that, and I think it's a generational. It's like it's passed down mm-hmm. through the generations too. So here you're on this all girl. Uh, band and you're touring with some of the greatest Zach Wilds and these uh, yeah, amazing like, well, Lemmy, in, Lemmy if we, yeah. if we yeah. learned anything from the movie uh, <laughs> High Fidelity Lemmy mm-hmm. is God according to <laughs> yeah. according to Jack Black <laughs> yeah. yeah and I understand he was li- listening to your music in his bus, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he used to stick on the Thunder Mother records and rock out. And and we had played with uh, Mickey D as well, the drummer. Um, mm-hmm. And then Phil Campbell, actually, I was meant to be on a record that he was doing. He he and his sons have their own lineup as well. Cool. Phil was actually one of the ones who wrote me one of my visa letters when I first moved. So that kind of... Wow. And, you know, it's so funny because they... I had to be on computer. Everybody had to sign it and stuff. But he, I had gone ahead of my lawyers and kind of reached out to some people and he literally posted me the, an actual handwritten letter. Wow. So my lawyer was like, I think we can make an exception for, for <laughs> Phil Campbell. <laughs> We're going to talk about coming to America. Yeah, mm, but I want to hear another song. You know, yes. Um, well, you know, uh, do you want me to keep this all Irish or would you like no, a mental let's, health let's do, one in here? Let's do what... Like, Let's yeah. let's go beyond, yeah. Because uh, you you know, and again, we've talked on this show a million times. You've heard me say, I don't 
believe in genres as yeah. a, as an mm-hmm. artist. I agree. Now that's you know the industry mm-hmm. radio. They're gonna say you're this, you're that, yeah. but. As far as artists go, I, I love the artists that define their own genre. Yes. And I've said this a million times. You've heard me. There wasn't a Taylor Swift before Taylor Swift. Amen. There wasn't a Dolly Parton, you yeah. know. So why be a carbon copy of something that's already Exactly existed? right. And, you, and, and you're a great example. You've done it all. You've done uh, Celtic music. You've done rock and roll. <laughs> you've done country. Yeah. You have melded all together into the Claire Cunningham style. <laughs> so show us some I, of that. Well, yeah. I appreciate that, Dave, because I, I have not arguments with people here, but they're like, you really need to pick a lane and then mm. do what you want to do. I'm like, no, no, no. I think it's the other way around. I'll, I'll keep doing what I'm doing and then, know. you know, be because like you said, every successful person gets told that prior to them breaking it or whatever like you know it's it's wild but no this song um is my mental health awareness song and suicide prevention is one of the major ones that i i advocate for and um this was written back in 2020 um first lockdown and i just literally had this instinct this voice say grab your pen grab your paper and Mm. i mean I, I don't know the exact time it took, but it was somewhere between eight and 12 minutes. Wow. The song was given to me. Wow. I'm a vessel. And so uh, as much as I'd love to, to claim it, um, this is just a message for anybody who needs it in a tough time, who are going through something right now, have done in the past or maybe the the future. Um, if, if, if you find yourself in a rough place, then I hope the lyrics in this speak to you. And it's Great. called I Swear. I Swear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not a race As long as you get where you're going It's not always easy Living life not knowing What's on the other side Close your eyes Promise don't be afraid Dream of the better times to come in. Just keep the faith. I promise you, like me, you'll see it through. It's taking all of your strength to just stay strong. When you feel like giving up, keep holding on. It's gonna be alright Might not be overnight But with a lot of love and mercy And a little less pride You'll get there You'll get there I swear I know Cause I felt what you're feeling When the well has run dry And it seems like you're dreaming Only nightmares Like the battle That you never win A broken record Always on spin And the worries just don't fade It's taking all of your strength It's just stay strong When you feel like giving up Keep holding on It's gonna be alright Might not be overnight But with a lot of love and mercy And a little less pride You'll get there You'll get there I swear Overnight, but 
will I love in mercy and a little less pride? You get there, 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 you get there. I swear. Incredible, Claire Cunningham here on the Songwriter Connection podcast. I swear, this is from the Mercy record. Yes. But done live around our dining room. <laughs> yes, and it's a piano song, so it's oh. not very... <laughs> yes. Well, people are going to just have to listen. There's a video of this, too. There right? is. Yeah. There's it, a music video. And too, speaking of videos, well. you got a video that just came out right? <laughs> yes. on the 5th. Yeah. Clover. Tell us about that. <clears throat> yeah. So <clears throat> the song that you played, um, yes, Clover. So my first coming back to my faith. Mm-hmm. Um, was 2020 actually of all the years and it had nothing to do with COVID yeah. it was definitely at the end of that year you know I was walking with the Lord when I was a child and mm-hmm. religion was something I was so you know I was very very into it and but mm-hmm. then I left it and for many reasons but one including the hypocrisy I kind of saw in the church and I don't know it just didn't resonate with me anymore and Mm -hmm. obviously I uh, went down um, my own road and uh, I just literally did everything that's classified as non or not godly and Mm -hmm. I just really got taken over by by the enemy man like I just it was it was a horrible road looking back, you know, and I was into witchcraft and oh, oh man, it was just like, it's wow. just, I promise you, that's why when people say like, oh, I don't know, there's hope for them. I'm like, listen, if if somebody like me can yeah. turn like 180 on it. So yeah, 2020, beautiful year. Mm. Got, got, got a got back with with the lord and and got a great personal relationship with him and so um myself and drac um wrote uh clovers mm-hmm. and it was just a thank you song to him for always being there mm-hmm. you know and uh washing away the sin and the guilt and 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 it, trust me it's not like i i think a lot of people think oh you know you're you're great now you know but that's where life begins uh, as somebody i'm sure listening can can equate their own lifestyle and um to like just being some place and then coming to just such a beautiful place the light i guess you want to call it you know but um yeah it's a journey and life continues to be one but it's just i'm not doing it alone anymore do you know what i mean yeah and i'll equate and i'm writing this in in that memoir type thing i have seen therapists i have tried this thing i've tried that thing i've done and nothing has given me the peace and the solitude that is the holy spirit within me and that literally like and i only share that not to be uh, preachy or Mm -hmm. not to say that that's what you need to do but from my own personal experience Mm -hmm. and from all the things i've tried and tested in life nothing has given me the long-term solitude that he does residing within me and it's Mm -hmm. so beautiful and i can tap there anytime 24 hours a day free of charge you know uh no therapist can do that for you no not at all (laughs) you you know know, i'm all about the passion and i talk about it all the time it's not only your voice in your playing Mm. in your songwriting but it's all about you i mean you just exude that well that's 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 uh i equate that to being a channel that's just Mm. willing and and able to just as you said i'm a vessel yeah yeah you know so there's not none of this like yes i'm a hard worker and yes i'm determined and stuff but i wouldn't be here without my creator Mm. right and so i've been given this gift and i know that i get opportunities and i get songs and downloads and you name it and the words like i don't prepare for anything Mm. i just Mm. allow Mm. 
I've always been like that and never knew that's what I was tapping into really you know if you try and prepare me I remember in Thunder Mother like they'd say okay so after this song we need you to say this and then like and I'm like oh no man that's not how I roll <laughs> like I just I'm very off the cuff uh-huh. um, but I allow just the spirit within me to just roll with how I feel and so when people think I'm crazy rocking up to even festivals and not even have a set list I'm like nah I'll feel it mm. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, and That's I will. And there'll be times I'll literally say to the audience, okay, somebody here needs to hear this song because I just keep getting told that I need to play it and it's just brand new. So forgive me. But And then it's it turned is. out to be, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Patty just got home. I hear the garage tour. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> That's what that is. my guitar? Yeah. No, not you your know? guitar. Not at all. There you go. But we do need any other song from you. We really yeah. do. Can yeah. you play us another one? This is my baby then. This is right? your baby. I so, want to hear your baby. This song um, is called Erin Emachri. Oh. And that translates to Ireland in my heart. Thank a lot of people. For can- that. <laughs> I texted her yesterday. Yeah. I love this song. What does that mean? <laughs> and she goes, It's on my record. I, I know, I know yeah. Yeah. You know, t- talk about this just because yeah. I'm curious. Mm. D- so uh, the Irish language is, is Gaelic? Gaelic. Okay. Mm-hmm. Does, yeah. Is it widely spoken on it's the island? It's widely spoken mostly in the West Coast and West Coast. the Southwest. And that's where you're from. Right? So right. I'm actually, so Dublin uh, and, and County Louth and Wicklow, Wexford, they're uh-huh. on the East Coast. E- oh, that's East Coast. Yeah. Okay. Now, most of the Gwail Talks, they're called uh, Irish houses. As a child, you know, in the summer, you get to go to the Gwail Talk for three weeks and you're only allowed to speak Gaelic. Like and That's it. in school, yeah, wow. <laughs> the older generation speak it a lot more. Uh-huh. Um, but also in Ireland, every signpost is in Gaelic, Osquilgia, we call it, and then mm. in English underneath. Um, mm. So you grew up with yeah. both languages? Or? Yeah, no, I wouldn't be fluent in, uh-huh. in Osquilgia anymore. Uh-huh. You know, growing up, you, you, but if you choose um, to be a police. Uh, in the police force or a teacher, you must be fluent. You better know it. Huh? Yeah, in wow. in 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 Australia, because Thanks if you're not, that. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. or if you had to use the bathroom uh, in school, mm-hmm. you'd be like, "Unwell, Kyadigum Dolomak, could the unlever small shade of holly?" And that meant, "Can I go to the toilet, please?" Oh my! Wow. And yeah, and mm. you know the roll call was always done in Australia, so your name like Clarny Conicon. Oh. Uh, I, I still remember that. That's crazy. You know, I've never been to Ireland. It's on the. It's on my bucket list, yeah, and someday we're going to go there. But my father and my mother went, and um, one of the things he, he said, he got to the airport and they they looked at his um, passport and said. Well, that's not how we spell one hand here. All right, yeah, <laughs> we have a, another way of yeah, spelling it. Here. It's got a G in there. A G H. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what's really cool? Um, he went to. From what I understand, my my family came from around the Limerick area. Oh so, yeah, yeah. So not far. they probably mm-hmm. spoke right. No. Yeah, like most counties do and can. Uh-huh. It's just it's not as prevalent in certain counties as it would be in others, and usually the west coast down into the southwest is definitely huh. more. You know, it's it's just it's a yeah. it, it's some of them it, they're only speaking Osquilgia. Oh, yeah, okay. it's it's, it's yeah, Osquilgia. That's the language. Yeah, That's yeah, great. it's a and it's a language that makes absolutely no sense. But like it's none of the letters no. like make sense together no. like no. nothing no. and Americans trying to say Irish names is always funny oh too. that's got to be hilarious yeah. <laughs> it just makes no sense but I will tell you he he went to a pub near Limerick or in Limerick and, mm. and he said it was Lenahan's pub yep, and most was, likely yeah and it was L-E-N-A-H-A-N and yeah. he said he met the owner and they talked had a pint and yeah. he said Dave uh, there was no doubt they, we had to be related because he looks like yeah. he looks like us <laughs> You know, it's so. the gene pool is pretty small back yes, home. Exactly. I, right, I right. promise you that. <laughs> right. So let's hear this wonderful song from this yeah. great. You you need to download this. You need to listen Spotify wherever you get your music. It's Dear Ireland from our guest. It's kind of a St. Patrick's Day gift to you all. <laughs> Claire Cunningham. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of all the time. I have spent away year on year, day by day. I'll take with me fine memories, 
Dear Aaron's in my heart she'll always be. Aaron in Mokri, Aaron in Mokri. Do you cry for the absence I've left behind? For when I dream, I dream about the days gone by Missing you out on the long, hard road Dear errands, I lead me back home Can you hear a calling in? Voices over one as thin Far away o'er Atlantic seas Calling out, calling me Aaron in Bokri, Aaron in Bokri. you gave is all I'll ever need far distant cry from you to me and if you don't receive my call please always know I'm never gone See who she's become today. Blue, white, weary, and unafraid. But a part of her will always be in the green, green grass of that we come to. Here in Mokri. Of all the time I have spent away Year on year, day by day I'll take with me fine memories Dear Aaron's Isle, in my heart I'll always be Aaron in Mokri, Aaron in Mokri, Aaron in Mokri, Aaron in Mokri, Aaron in Mokri. That is beyond beautiful. That is perhaps the best performance ever on this Songwriter oh, Connection podcast. You find legends on here. Stop it. I'm going to try to make you laugh. Aaron Emo Cree. Aaron Emo Cree. I hate my laugh. Um, <laughs> Is that how you say it? <laughs> Some people are like, Iron, I might cry. I, I like, might cry. I, <laughs> I would never expect anybody oh. to know that, but oh it's my. Aaron Imachri. 
beautiful. It means once again Ireland in my heart. Ireland in yeah. your heart. It's in mine <laughs> which too. it is. <laughs> it's in all our hearts for St. Mm. Patty's Day. I it's, want to make sure people catch you on your website, which is Yeah, so www.clairecunningham music and, and it's C L A R E. No I it's the Irish Irish yeah. Claire. Claire Cunningham Music dot com. Okay. And on there and I run the whole thing, I try and make this very user friendly, all right. So you should have no problems with all the awesome. links for everything you're on there. Very cool. Yes. Videos and stuff, everything. Yeah. Yes, and everything. Everything mm-hmm. is on there. And even on the home page are the link for the Opry if anybody is uh, wanting to get a ticket and stuff like that. Very so, yes, cool. Very and cool. people can see you here in Nashville at the Moxie. You're playing yes. there? Yes. So when I'm not, yes. yes. When I'm not on the road, mm-hmm. um, you'll find me downtown there on the Moxie Hotel. Um, cool. Place. Yeah, I have a, yeah, it's, it's yeah. so great. Yeah. I, I meet a they lot. They greet of you. I understand fantastic. they greet you as you check in with a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, a free yeah. drink token. Yeah. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so you're playing there. They're yeah, good. I, good. I do a, a few shows there sometimes, more than one a week, sometimes less. But yeah, it's a great, it's, like, it's just little residency I've got there when I'm not on the road. So. You're always welcome around the corner at 12 Keys, too. Yes, just we're going to make that, that happen. Yeah. We will make that happen. And yes. folks, don't miss it. Grand Ole Opry this Saturday night. Mm. Claire steps into the circle. It's <laughs> so cool. Yes. Awesome. Listen Thank to it. You. And all the best to you. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate your time and my pleasure. your ears and, and everybody else who's listening in. Uh, mm-hmm. I really appreciate it and hopefully we'll connect. You're welcome back anytime. Anytime you got a new release, let's, let's do this again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can listen to you talk. <laughs> Forever. I can do your voicemail. Thank you for listening to the Songwriter Connection podcast. Find us on social media at Songwriter Connection. Also, listen to Dave Lanahan's Nashville Connections radio show. It streams live every Friday morning on WOBL and WNOI. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube. See you next time on Songwriter Connection.